Today we're going to talk about the groovy 70s. We'll be on page 5 of your interactive notebook. One of the biggest things that came out of the 1970s was the 26th Amendment. You'll remember that we were fighting the Vietnam War at the time, and most states had set their voting age to 21 years old, so you couldn't vote until you were 21. It's a state right to determine the voting age. So during the Vietnam War, 18-year-olds were considered old enough to be drafted into military service. They could die and f fight and die for their country, but they were not old enough to vote the people who sent them to this war. Most Americans felt that this was unfair, and in 1971, the 26th Amendment officially lowered the voting age from 21 years of age to 18. It also helped to increase voter participation for the bracket of 18 to 20 year olds. During the 1970s, we were involved in an economic recession. We had record unemployment with high inflation, and that becomes known as stagflation. Mo the, the primary causes of our economic recession in the 70s can be contributed to the Vietnam War, the 1973 oil crisis, competition from emerging countries that became industrialized and they're now competing with metal production. This also triggers, triggers a crisis with steel. And then lastly, we had a stock market crash between 1973 and 74. Also during this time period, we're seeing that the economic boom as a result of World War II was slowly coming to an end. The primary president of the 1970s was Richard Nixon. Once he's elected, he focuses his domestic policy on inflation and the oil crisis. Again, as we said, unemployment and inflation had been on the rise during his first few years in office. To try and fix this, he turns to a policy known as deficit spending. Basically, it was an expansionary fiscal policy where the government would spend more money in order to try and, um, they would spend money in different programs in order to try and kick the unemployment crisis and the inflation pro process. The oil crisis mentioned on the other slide uh, came in 1973. The United States backed Israel in a war against Egypt and Syria. Because of this, the countries known as OPEC, or the oil producing, their oil producing countries, they imposed embargo of oil to the United States, and so they ultimately shut, up, shut off our access to oil and therefore gasoline. And so it causes major shortages of gasoline in the United States. During Nixon's first few years in, pre first few years in office, he's actually a president when we have our moon landing. So technically we're in the 1960s here, but Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin are the first astronauts to land on the moon in 1969. So JFK's promise in 1960 to put a man on the moon by the end of the 1960s came true, and it's um, during Nixon's presidency. Nixon also uh, adopts a policy known as detente. We're starting to see a relaxation in tensions between the United States and other Cold War communist nations, the biggest one being the Soviet Union. Uh, so he visits the Soviet Union, talks with Moscow. Um, he also becomes the first president to ever visit China, which is also another large um, communist nation. Nixon goes down in history uh, for the Watergate scandal. Unfortunately, the good that came for, out of his presidency was stained with the Watergate scandal. And we're going to watch a short video on the next slide that explains the Watergate scandal in, under, in about a minute. Watergate in one minute? Are you kidding me? Watergate is a scandal in American history that resulted in the downfall and eventual resignation of Richard Milhouse Nixon. Richard Nixon ran for his second term in 1972, and he did not want to lose. He lost in 1960 to JFK. He won in a squeaker in 1968, so 1972 was going to be different. And he had a bunch of people that worked for him, and their nicknames, aptly enough, were the Creeps, the Committee to Re-Elect the President. And basically, what occurred is whether Nixon knew in the beginning or not, I don't know, but it was a plan to infiltrate the Democratic offices at the Watergate Hotel to basically steal their stuff, to find the nitty gritty, to find the dirt, 
and to win the election. Unfortunately, the burglars were caught. And even though Nixon trounced in 1972 and won that re-election, it was after that election, through the trials of these burglars, where it became known that they were working for the White House. The Watergate scandal is really about a cover-up rather than the actual burglary. And whether or not Nixon was using his powers in the office of the presidency to basically hide this scandal. When it came known that Nixon had recorded many things in the White House, there was a subpoena issued for these tapes. Nixon refused to give those tapes over, claiming executive privilege. This became a trial, Nixon versus United States, where unanimous court forced him to give those tapes over. And this is the magic words right here. Nobody, Mr. President, is above the law and the Constitution. When Nixon had to give those tapes over, he knew the gig was up, so he quit got out of town. So there you go, guys. Now you know a little bit about Watergate. Check out a longer video down below to grow your brain from time to size. And we'll see you guys next time you press my buttons and we're touching those energy flows. So that was very quick and dirty of what the Watergate scandal was. Ultimately, it does tarnish and stain Nixon's presidency. He does resign before he can be impeached. He definitely would have been impeached if he hadn't resigned prior. So with his resignation, his vice president, Gerald Ford, takes office after his, uh, takes over um, after that resignation. Uh, general consensus, he's viewed as popular, non-controversial, like kind of no skeletons in his closet. So he's well received when he takes office after Nixon. Uh, one of the first things uh, Ford does do is he pardons Nixon for all offenses he may have committed and he avoids future prosecution. Nixon avoids future prosecution. This is a very unpopular decision, both amongst the general public as well as those who were loyal to Nixon that are still facing prosecution. So those burglars that were mentioned in that video, they were still facing prosecution. They were not pardoned. Only Nixon was. So um, the Ford pardon of Nixon was not well received. Um, also due to this, many Republicans uh, Nixon and Ford are both Republic were both Republicans. Uh, they were voted out of office in the next congressional election, which came in 1974. So it kind of upheavals um, Congress as well. Ford tries to uh, focus a lot on the economy during his presidency. He comes up with a policy known as WIN or WHIP inflation now, trying to get the economy back to uh, a stable position. He runs for re-election in the next. Uh, next election, um, but unfortunately he is defeated in 1976 to Jimmy Carter. So we have a Democrat, James Earl Carter, who is commonly known as Jimmy Carter. He wins, uh, not not by a huge victory, very narrow, so Ford had, had a chance, um, but he wins in 1976. Carter had no political experience uh, and lacked the ability to win reluctant voters to his side, or reluctant politicians. Um, so it was, you know, again, it's not a formal requirement to be president uh, to have experience in politics. It's just kind of one of those unwritten laws or unwritten kind of kind of expected or sometimes helps. But you don't have to have it. It's not a formal requirement. It's an informal requirement. That's what I should say. He was well liked for his informal approach to the presidency. Um, he was actually a former peanut farmer. Um, so very just kind of down to earth guy. Uh, he focuses on energy while in office, and he wants to save on rising oil prices. Um, again, you know, the, the energy crisis was still taking place in 1976, or coming to a close, and so we want to find ways to conserve fuel in Americans' cars, homes, and businesses. So we want to try and use it as little as possible. He also created a new cabinet department known as the Department of Energy, which still exists today. Um, so some of his conservation plans weren't well received, especially in states that produced oil and gas. They did not like the idea of trying to conserve fuel because obviously it was going to affect their industry. Um, so it wasn't well received by everyone. During Carter's presidency, he also wants to focus on alternative energy sources, one of those being nuclear power. So he wants to find other ways to generate energy. Um, that will be more effective and we don't have to rely on other countries. Unfortunately, during this time period, there was a nuclear meltdown, um, a partial nuclear meltdown, at a place called Three Mile Island, right outside of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and it really shakes people 
uh, that they're, they're very scared of nuclear energy and the, the potential that could happen with a nuclear meltdown. Um, so if, if you know anything about the Chernobyl incident in, in uh, East Russia, uh, that's where people were a little bit cautious about nuclear energy. Uh, the last part of Jimmy Carter's presidency comes in 1979, um, and it's kind of staying on his presidency. We have the, the Iran hostage crisis in the late 70s. So in January of 1979, there was a revolution in Iran. Uh, they replaced a pro-American Shah, or their leader, with an anti-Western leader. Carter allowed this displaced Shah to enter the United States for some medical treatment. He was battling cancer. Um, and the citizens of the uh, Iranian citizens were very upset with this decision. And so they seized the American embassy in Tehran, which was Iran's capital. Um, the Shah that the United States was harboring um, had done some not so nice things to the Iranian citizens. And so basically, since the United States was harboring them, harboring him, they were not happy um, with that. So they attacked the American embassy. Uh, what ultimately happens is we have 52 Americans that are taken hostage from the embassy, and they are um, in, in, a, in this hostage crisis for over 444 days, so just a little bit over a year. Ultimately, uh, Carter is not able to secure the hostages' freedom during his presidency, um, and it's, it's going to severely decrease his popularity, and ultimately it costs him re-election in 1980. Um, so unfortunately, the 1970s come to a close on a, a bitter end. Uh, so again, we've been looking at the 1970s, just some highlights of the 70s, looking at our three presidents, Nixon, Ford, and Carter. Be sure to enter this into your interactive notebook, and thanks for watching.